Lord Stripey and the Unruly Peasants There once was a little snowman called Stripey. Stripey was too little to go to school with his adopted brothers and sisters. When Stripey's mummy and daddy were at work, Stripey was minded by a woman he called Nanny. One day Stripey was sitting in his house with Nanny. The weather outside was lovely. The sun was shining and birds were singing. Stripey went over to Nanny and said, Nanny, can we go to the beach today? I'm tired of staying inside. Nanny looked thoughtful for a second, then her face lit up. That's a great idea, Stripey. We can go and dig a sandcastle on the beach. Nanny and Stripey went and packed a picnic lunch to take to the beach. Stripey grabbed a bucket and a small shovel. Nanny took Stripey to her car and they drove to the beach. Stripey's eyes went wide at the sight of all this sand to build a castle in. Wow, Nanny, there's much more sand here than in my sand pit, Stripey exclaimed. Nanny set, set out her deck chair and sat down to watch Stripey dig his sandcastle. Stripey dug and dug and dug. Slowly the castle grew walls. Finally it grew towers. Then last of all, Stripey dug a moat for his castle. Stripey filled his bucket with water and then filled in the moat. Nobody was invading his castle if he could help it. Something just wasn't quite right. Something was missing. Stripey scratched his head in puzzlement until an idea came to, into his head. Every castle needed a village or two around it. Stripey quickly built the villages he needed around his castle. Nanny looked over and saw all the work completed. Well done, Stripey, Nanny exclaimed. I am Lord Stripey. All my peasants have to obey me, Stripey stated. Really, Nanny asked. Lords need a king or queen to obey too. Why? asked little Stripey. Because that is how society worked, Nanny stated. Peasants obeyed lords. Lords obeyed kings or queens. OK, you can be the queen, Stripey said. As queen, I decree you need to be kind to your peasants, Nanny said. After all, they may rebel if you don't. What's rebel mean? Stripey asked. They may decide to kick you out of the castle and rule themselves, Nanny said. Nanny went back to her throne and sat down to see what Stripey would do. Stripey soon forgot Nanny's words. He noticed his peasants growing rich, so he doubled their taxes. The peasants began to grumble to each other. Stripey used the money to buy an army. My army will stop them rebelling, Stripey said to himself. The cost of keeping an army forced Stripey to raise taxes further. One day, a group of villagers came to Stripey. Lord Stripey, please lower our taxes, the eldest villagers said. Why? Stripey asked. Our children go hungry now that we have to pay so much money. Stripey just laughed. Go away or I will take your heads as well as your money. The peasants left. Later, as taxes were increased further, they returned. Again, they asked for taxes to be lowered. Stripey, true to his word, sent them to be beheaded. The rest of the villagers were shocked by this action. They began to grumble in the streets and openly shouted for Stripey to be removed. Stripey sent his soldiers to burn the villagers' houses. Soon the only villagers left in the villagers did not dare to speak out. The rest hid in the forest. One day the villagers sent off a courier to tell Queen Nanny about the injustices being done to them. Queen Nanny wrote a letter to Stripey telling him to be nicer to his peasants. Stripey ignored the letter and sent his soldiers out to hunt the outlaws. The outlaws knew the forest better than the soldiers, so began to ambush them. Captain Cuddles, the head of Stripey's army, went out himself to lead the army against the peasants. Even he was beat, beaten by the peasants' hero. The peasants were being aided by none other than Dashing Doggy the Highwayman. Doggy knew all the secret ways and how to ambush travellers. As Doggy beat off more soldiers, the peasants in the village began to see that there was hope yet. Stripey wrote to Queen Nanny, requesting help. My peasants are rebelling all over the place. Send soldiers, Stripey's letter read. Queen Nanny fought to herself, then saddled her horse. Queen Nanny led her army towards the land belonging to Lord Stripey. Meanwhile, Lord Stripey's domains were growing more lawless. More peasants were rebelling, and Dashing Doggy was beating the soldiers back to the castle. Finally, Stripey ordered his soldiers back into the castle and raised his drawbridge. The bridge will keep out the peasants, Captain Cuddles told his lord. Doggy and his ragtag army stopped at the moat. There was no way they could cross it without rafts. Dog Doggy set his men to cutting logs. The men hammered and sawed to build rafts. Stripey began to watch the horizon from his battlements. When would Queen Nanny arrive? Finally, the Queen's army arrived. Doggy went out under a flag of truce to meet with Nanny. Doggy told Nanny exactly what had been going on. Nanny shook her head gravely. Surely Stripey would have listened to her, but no. Nanny could see the burnt houses and the peasants' hunger. Stripey had not listened at all. He had taxed the peasants and chopped off their heads. Nanny strode up to the edge of the moat. 
Lord Stripey, come out and talk, Nanny cried. Stripey leant over the battlements. Are you here to punish the peasants? Stripey asked. No, you are the one to be punished, Nanny stated. You disobeyed your queen and treated your peasants badly. The peasants cheered at this announcement. Their petition had been heard. Justice would be done. Stripey began to worry. How would Nanny punish him? Nobody can breach the walls, Cuddles stated. By this time, the rafts were ready. Queen Nanny and Dashing Doggy led their armies across the moat. The soldiers of the Queen put ladders against the walls. The soldiers and peasants began to climb. Stripey's soldiers fired arrows to discourage them. Still the invaders climbed upwards. Bring up the oil, Cuddles commanded. The soldiers passed, poured oil onto their enemies. Invaders fell into the moat. Finally the oil and arrows ran out. The invaders climbed onto the battlements. There Stripey and his army met them with axe and sword. The invaders won their hold on the battlements. More poured up from below. Stripey and his retainers retreated into the keep. Here they barricaded the doors and windows. Finally, Queen Nanny called for rams to break in the doors. The invaders broke into the keep. Stripey realised all was lost. Throw down your arms, he commanded his soldiers. Captain Cuddles and his men threw down their arms. Queen Nanny and Doggy strode into the room. Bind Lord Stripey, he's being taken back to the capital to face judgment, Nanny commanded. Soldiers bound Lord Stripey and led him to the cart that would take him to the Queen's capital. The Queen and her, and her army departed for the capital. The peasants tore down the castle built by Lord Stripey and restored their villages. Nanny and Stripey began packing up their belongings in order to go home. What have you learnt today, Stripey? Nanny asked. Be nice to people or they will tear down your castle, Stripey replied. The End